like we see many of our defiant Catholic uh, politicians, and, and many Catholics, many Catholics have become depraved because their intellect has become corrupted. Now, uh, just, uh, uh, oh, and, and, and so the other thing, that not only did moral evil come into the world through the sin of Adam, but ontic evil, ontic evil, and I throw that word out there a lot, and people don't understand what ontic evil is. Ontic evil is evil that is not moral. So pain and suffering, right? Eve having to go through the pains of childbirth. That's an ontic evil. Cancer is an ontic evil. All right, we burn ourselves. That's an ontic evil. Prior to Adam and Eve eating the fruit, there was no pain, there was no suffering, there was nothing. Right? It was just, and there was no, of course, ability to commit sin. It was through their disobedience. Uh, and then in the gospel, in the gospel, the important lesson, I think, for us is that, and you see this in all the different uh, renditions or versions of the, and they're not different versions of the multiplication of loaves and fishes. I, I once saw, uh, I forget which guy it was, I think it was Tom Brokaw on Channel 4, did this, uh, this uh, special or group on scripture. And the guy, and this, this is just, it caused you to shake your head, right? He said that, well, you know, these are, there's contradictions in scripture, and he used the multiplication of loaves and fishes as a, a, a reason, or as an, an example of the contradiction in scripture, right? The different size of the crowds, the different number of baskets, and things like that. Well, I mean, it says in Scripture that Jesus did this more than once. God forbid we read Scripture, Tom. Uh, but even St. Augustine said that the explanation of the different versions of the multiplication of loaves and fishes is that Jesus did this more than once. These are completely different instances, and it makes perfect sense, right? But in every single one of them, and I'm going to relate it back to his first miracle, because I think it's important to understand his first miracle at the wedding feast of Cain. And we really don't get our minds around this or really meditate or contemplate it, right? So Mary tells Jesus they need wine, right? So what does he do? Does he give them just enough wine to get through the rest of the feast? No. All right. He turns upwards to 180 gallons of water into wine. Anywhere from 120 gallons to 180 gallons of water he turns into wine. I mean, think about how much wine that is. And what's the significance of that? The same significance that we have here. Seven baskets left over after they were satisfied. And then in, in other versions, right? Five back, 12 back, left over. What is the meaning of this? That when Jesus imparts grace upon us, he always gives us an overabundance of grace, more than we can possibly ever need. But we don't even use the grace that he gives us, and we don't even scratch the surface in terms of us accessing the grace that Jesus gives us. This is so important for us to understand what is available to all of us for our salvation, which is what I'm going to talk about this weekend in my homilies. Let's now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs.